in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. To those who have received awards, many congratulations to all of you and many thanks to the organizers because expressing gratitude is quite rare in our society. Every morning the sun gives us light and we do not say thank you. Our elders gave birth to us and we do not thank them. Our teachers are with us and we do not thank them. Thank you very much to all of you. To those who organized the entire event and this institution, I would like to make a request that you are preserving education for all these organizers. I am a technologist. I ran away from school. I am educated, but not much. And I did not send my children to school either. The reason for this was that I felt that my, uh, for the work for which Unfortunately, schools in our country are unable to do this. So we taught them Iqbal's lessons on truthfulness, justice, and leadership, so that they may be tasked with leading the world. The same school, the one I created at home for my children, I have now replicated to create a new one. In the city of Karachi, I have established an AI internet first school, Iqbal. What this means is that we are experimenting with the kind of education that should exist after the advent of AI um, and the internet. 200 years ago, strength was attributed to wrestlers who had physical power. Then came the industrial era, bringing industrial power. Then the information era arrived, bringing the power of information. Just one year ago, the value of all the information that humanity had accumulated up to that point became zero. After the advent of artificial intelligence, the arrival of ChatGPT and similar platforms, all the effort we put into road learning over so many years has been rendered obsolete. The company named Nokia, which introduced mobile phones and put them in people's hands, had its CEO say upon leaving that they made no mistakes. But the times have changed. And today, the same thing has happened again. None of us, including you, are making mistakes intentionally. But the realization that the times have changed has slipped away. Ten years ago, we didn't have this gadget. And today, there are 150 million smartphones, e, in our country. For $5 a month, we get unlimited internet, but we are not able to take advantage of it. We keep building upon building, constructing more and more, while all the knowledge and education in the world is available at this time. They are in our hands, but we have not been able to take advantage of them. That's why we don't have any teachers in our school. In our school, there are no teachers. We call them facilitators, whose job is to bring children to class. Even after 75 years, our gutters are overflowing. There is no water, no electricity, no solar power, no gas. So we have given our children the name that Dear, you have to spend your next 20 years on this work. You will fix the electricity problem, you will fix the gas problem, you will, just like Edi Sahib did, just like Jinnah Sahib did, and like other people who solved problems. Now you have to become the next um, Th Greta Thunberg, Malala, and people like them. Here, we don't teach them science, English, chemistry, biology, or anything. First, we remove their fear. We make them befriend snakes, befriend computers, befriend mobile phones, which are deeply ingrained within them. A mobile phone is such a bad thing that, God forbid, your religion might be in danger. In the first year, my principal came with me. I eagerly tell that in the first year, I used to cut the internet, cut the school's electricity, and delete videos from the computer, because I thought that this was some bad person who had opened our school, or more. By chance, we got the school in Ibrahim Haideri. So now I would like to invite all of you to come there. You will find people dealing with water issues, people dealing with electricity issues, and you will meet those children, little children, who are actually studying to solve these problems. We teach in such a way that the best four subjects in the world are covered. One, we show a TED Talk daily, and second, we teach them how to conduct interviews and conversations. The person who was being called to speak on stage could not even make eye contact with anyone until the age of 35. 
because no one taught him how to engage in conversation. Third, we teach it to make videos daily with the help of AI. And fourth, we have it do yoga, meditation, and practice prayer. In our program, every child has to watch a TED talk daily related to their assigned topic. If the child is assigned to water, they watch a TED talk about water every day. After watching the TED talk, they make their own video. They post on all social media platforms like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and they contact the author who gave the TED talk saying, Sir, I learned this from you today. Can I have half an hour of your time? I want to interview you. Our goal is that by the sixth grade, the child has conversed with at least 250 people each year. And you will see them on the internet. They will be the next Rehan Alawala on social media. You will see them appearing as a role model, working in their own field, contributing to their own purpose. They work. Then the second major issue of our country is the economy. Our previous Prime Minister proudly goes and announces that he has brought back $2 billion more in aid. It pains me a lot to hear this. This time, when I met some army personnel, they said that the Prime Minister will be chosen based on who begs better. I do not want a Prime Minister who is a beggar. Un I do not want to live in a country where begging is the norm. Our country is unnecessarily poor. We have everything in the world, with 250 million smart people. Yet our country's per capita income is $1,000 a year. The world's per capita income is $10,400 a year. Singapore's is $55,000 a year. And Luxembourg's is $112,000 a year. We are 112 times behind Luxembourg, 55 times behind Singapore, and almost 10 times behind the world. Why are they so happy? There is no reason. When you ask them, no reason is apparent to me. The reason I saw I am working to solve those problems. I believe that we consider Kashmir a very big issue. But I don't know a single person who says morning, afternoon, and evening that I work for Kashmir. My name is Kashmir Wala. I have never known a Palestinian Wala until today. So we have finally created a room in our school like the United Nations where children only study peacemaking. And nothing else. The issues of Palestine and Kashmir, our children, God willing, will solve for you. <laughs> Iqbal is indeed the founder of this country but we have not yet freed our intellect from slavery. We still believe that those from the outside will come and make us understand correctly. We think that outsiders will come and explain things to us. I have deliberately kept a distance from all educational institutions for the past two years because I do not want any educational institution to come and tell us what we are doing wrong in the new system we are going to create. I request all of you to please come, two children are sitting here, standing there. I will request all of you that these young people are the most proficient in IT among you. They have been with us for only one year in school. And the girl on the left has conducted interviews with 350 people, out of which 150 were foreigners. And out of those 150 foreigners, two bought tickets and came to Pakistan to see our school, wondering what we are doing and how these children could be like this. They thought there must be something going on with the language. I invite all of you to stay in touch with them. Give them an interview. Definitely share your knowledge with them. But do not impose it. Kindly request and ask them. Then I say, both Aristotle and Hazrat Ali have a saying that true knowledge is in asking questions. Today, after the advent of chat GPT -E and AI, our most important task is to ask questions. This AI provides answers to everything in the world. Speak in Urdu, speak in Sindhi, speak in Pashto, speak in Gujarati, speak in Persian, speak in whatever language you are comfortable with, it talks to you. It's free, it's free. You just need to install it on your phone. In your pocket right now, there is a dinosaur a genie that can provide you with solutions to every problem. The next step after knowledge is action.
As the poet once said, life is made through action. Even hell can become heaven. Now is the time for action, because we have the knowledge. We don't know how to extract treasures from this ocean, just as we don't know how to extract treasures from the ocean of knowledge. That's what we're trying to teach. I invite all of you again. Our campus in Kurangi is open from 8 in the morning to 5 in the evening. None of the classrooms look like traditional classrooms. The entrance room is designed like a spaceship, giving you the feeling that we will take you into the future, God willing. Congratulations to all of you. Once again, I am very grateful for the opportunity to speak with you. I have flown in specifically to be able to talk to you. You are all my teachers and I have love for all of you. You have dedicated your lives to this work. Now, my request, my plea to you is that we must free this country from unnecessary poverty. We are tired of being humiliated and distressed like this. I have faced 27 international rejections. There is only one reason. I have my green passport. God has given me money, respect, everything. But the humiliation of standing in line, I don't want our children seen to enter that future. I'm sure you don't want our children to enter that future either. You are all doing great work, but just one thing, times have changed. Times have changed, and if you don't change, no matter how good your grades are, those are just memory grades. They might not be knowledge grades. If you have knowledge, it, you know that last year, 22 billion rupees worth of ginger was imported into our country. It brings tears of blood that when you go to a university, there are 450 people sitting with PhDs, but ginger and garlic worth 12 billion rupees have been imported. So these are distressing matters. It's difficult. Again, I say, please do come. Please get in touch with our children. You will enjoy it a lot. You will come to enjoy and take nothing away. We have set up a very lovely coffee shop there. Come with the children, have coffee, eat. You will enjoy it a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, long live Pakistan. If anything seemed offensive, I am ready to be corrected.